Brooklyn in the house. Coming to the ring, the challenger, Holly Magic Man Malanaji. Max, here's the question as Malanaji makes his way into the ring. The con people didn't want a guy that can bang. We know Malinaji doesn't have a lot of power, but sometimes you better watch out what you ask for. Yeah, as Paulie's been mentioning all week, careful what you wish for. Malinaji is who careful promoters and matchmakers and managers, who they put their fighters in the ring with when they're trying to protect their fighters. 22 and 1, he would be 23 and 0. Oh. Maybe he would. Two, that he's been in a big fight like this before, and it always hasn't been on his home turf. Khan has not yet experienced this. Malinaji predicted that Khan will not have slept last night, anticipating this moment. And three, Malinaji says simply, I'm better than he is. When it comes down to a boxing contest, my skills are superior. Malinaji was so annoyed at what happened at the way, and he said, Forget about winning the title. I just want to beat this guy up. We'll see if he can do that tonight. Andreas Kotelnik, who held the 140-pound belt. And Khan followed the game plan to a tee for 12 rounds. The question begs to be asked, though, Max. Kotelnik fights a very European style. Those are all the kind of opponents that Khan has faced to this point as a pro and predominantly in the the defending champion, Amir King Khan! I've been in this too long. This is my destiny. This is my diary. This is my diary. Life story. This is the way I live. We are right. I've been waiting for this moment. He said he's taught me to use my brain more. Pick my shots, not rush in there. Well, Malinaji's going to want to make him rush. Malinaji's going to want to make him think tonight. Can Khan remain disciplined from the frenetic style that Malinaji's going to bring to the ring tonight? Khan is taller. Madison Square Garden for the formal introductions once again to the ring and Michael Buffer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the theater here in Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA. Golden Boy Promotions and Debella Entertainment in association with Khan Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Terry O'Connor and Steve Weisfeld and inside the ring in charge of the action at the bell in his 147th world title belt, referee Steve Smoger. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, champion of the world, Holly, Magic Man Malinaji. Yeah! And fighting out of the red corner, Wearing black with gold, official weight 139 and one half pounds. A super lightweight champion of the world, Amir King Khan. All right, Jablum's getting a work visa, had to spend extra time in Vancouver before he was able to come back into the States. Normally you'd say, well, oh, that's a big distraction, Quick, making no a punch, USA no debut. Khan told step, us step, it was actually step, a blessing step, in the size because he's working in the wild card gym out in Los Angeles. He said it was just... Watching a high-level boxing contest between two very fast athletic fighters. those long arms of Khan. Khan lands, a nice, Khan lands a nice short right hand on the inside. He's landed it a couple times so far this round. Good left hand by Khan. Right hand by Khan. That thus far, he is outboxing Malinaji. 
Good stiff jab, doubles up with the left hand, does Amir Khan. Khan steps in with power. Break, 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 break. Stop, 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 holds stop. on. I don't recall Malinaji being hit this cleanly, this often, this early in a fight. And we see Khan's height and reach advantage being used to great effect here. It's not so much that he's outspeeding Malinaji. Maybe he is. They look comparably fast to me. But he's able to hit Malinaji from a range that Malinaji's not able to counter from. You know, Malinaji likes to have different kinds of Don't trunks for his fights, and he always has a different hairdo. Tonight he came in sort of with a shocked hairdo where his hair is standing up. I think he's a little shocked right now as a fighter at the speed and accuracy from Amir Khan here in round one. Excellent round one for Amir Khan. Exchanges, okay, man? Nice deep breath. That's it. Now you, you saw how, what, he, what he's got, and we're not going in and out on him. Okay, let's make him reach, okay, Polly? We, we're sitting down. We don't want to sit down. We want to in and leave him out. Let him stretch with that with that jab. Okay? Then we count him. Well, good Speed. sequences in round number one. Watch Amir Khan right there. Touches Malinaji with the left. Right hand comes in over the top as Malinaji tries to duck away. And the sense you got in round number one, Max, is Malinaji was on the defensive. Malinaji's camp believes that Khan has a tendency to reach with his punches. New York City, HBO's Boxing After Dark. Amir Khan making his United States debut against Paulie Malinaji as Khan puts his 140-pound title on the line. Earlier tonight, Victor Ortiz, an easy 10-round decision against Nate Campbell. At this point, the 23-year-old Khan has shown a very nice poise. Steps in with a combination. You know, for a light hitter, Khan really has the mentality of a fighter. When he's hit, his reaction, even though he's a defensive fighter, his reaction is to throw right back. He's a very tough guy, Malinaji. No, 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 no. Plus, Max, if you look at his frame and his size, I mean, he's going to just add weight, move up in weight class, and fill out even nicer, he's just 23. You mean Khan? Khan. Yeah. That I just have lapses. Tonight, he cannot have any lapses against Amir Khan. End of round two. Beautiful. Speed kills, remember that. Do not load up. Through the first two rounds, Khan has landed 23 of 73 jabs, 32%. Malinaji, 5 of 42. Malinaji opens up to start round three. I like what his trainer, Sharif Yunan, did right. They said, don't look around the ring. Look at me. Stay focused. Yeah, usually that instruction would be good. Hey, don't punch. Step, 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 Paulie. Step, step. See something over Khan's left eyebrow, Bob? Might be a little red. No blood. Break. Don't punch. Don't punch. No, no, Paulie. Step around, baby. Step around. Well, Ozzy missed time for that counter left hook. Punch out him here. Punch out. Punch out him here. Punch out. That's it. Punch out. Well, now he touches him to the left. like a better round for Malinaji. 
like he's figuring a few things out. Still not winning the round, but finding more success landing his own shots. Hurry, no punching. No, no, let's go, let's go. Hey. Touch into the body, and then a right hand up top. Seeing as how Khan's left eyebrow does look like it's discolored, and how Mala not family from Pakistan, how his mom went to the press gun fight, and after he got knocked out, said, I'm not going to any more fights. Remember, I want you to paint him a little bit more, make him committed to the pain. Is the pace okay? Yeah, the pace is good, but I want you to paint a little bit more, okay? Okay. All right, paint him and dry as dry, dry, dry. he's making me. Make, make. To my eye, when he has tried, he's been met with counter shots and foiled. To Harold's point about the jab, combination there from Khan. Khan's landed 38% of his jabs to this point, according to Copy Box. It's much easier to bounce around. Juan Diaz when he's coming to get you all the time. Punches and punches while Najee moves around him, creates angles. Here, Khan is pretty traditional, but really foundation solid. Right, the idea there, there Malinaji had some moments with the left hook. He had a good moment with the left hook in the previous round. The, the idea, you know, what can Khan prove in a fight like this? Because the real question mark about him is his chin. Well, as I mentioned, he can prove that he has A boxing ability, grade A boxing ability. In outboxing, a, a master boxer like Malinaji, that's what Khan's doing. And it's his first trip on the road. That's right, and that he can handle the atmosphere of fighting on the road. Of course, Khan does have a lot of supporters here, as it turns out. Tune in May 18th for the next Real me. Sports. We'll profile the controversial new football focus, coach okay? at USC, at Lane you Kiffin. You don't want to miss it. World Championship Boxing is back June 5th. Miguel hey, Cotto makes his debut relax. at 154 so pounds on, against it. title holder. Okay. Break in. Just try to shoot that body shot, okay? You know, Pauli Malinaj, got a little aggressive in the last round. Tried to press the fight a little bit. And Khan countered him with a short right hand inside. He did, but Malinaji also had moments, successful moments, pressuring Khan in that round. Good, round go number punch, five punch, underway. Step out, step out, step out, guys. Good. In fact, oftentimes, that backfires because the boxer is used to handling pressure. That the best way to disrupt a good defensive boxer is with another good defensive boxer. And that's what Khan is presenting here to Malinaji. And you know, when Malinaji just got knocked down, Max, I saw shot. a left hook to the body. Yep. That when you look at that again on replay, we'll show it to you in between rounds. Yep, Malinaji looked to me like he was taking a breather after a body shot. It was not ruled a knockdown by Steve Smoger because they got entangled as Malinaji held on and then kind of tumbled down. You heard Steve Smoger say, keep your feet falling. But there was a left hook in there that might have been the impetus for that. In terms of what Malinaji can do, he's shown through his career that he's a B-plus fighter. He's lost to the A fighters, he's beaten the rest. And Part of the matchmaking here, I suppose, is to leave the impression. Okay. The stoppage against Ricky Hatton in November of 08. And then the controversial loss to Juan Diaz. That's it, that's it, way to get out. We'll say this about Malinaji's legs, too. His legs looked very good in the first Diaz fight. But in his last time out against Diaz in the rematch. 137th round on his resume. Nice round, baby. Nice round. That's the round we need. Some water. Some water? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Listen to me, son. Listen to me. Please. Steve. I know you can relax. You're going to eat him up if you relax. Okay, Steve. don't tie him up. The ring against Diaz was a strategic decision made 
so that he wouldn't give up too much ground. He could keep Diaz more firmly in the middle of the ring. But looking back at it, to Harold's point again, maybe it's that Malinaji's legs aren't what they once were. In boxing, it's not like baseball where you get to see a guy hit 600 times a season. The sample sizes are much smaller, so we have to... There's more guesswork involved about where a fighter is physically at a certain point in his career. Yeah, 238 rounds as a pro. Malinaji had a good amateur career. He was the U.S. champion in 2001, so there's a lot of miles on the track. Even look, go back to the positioning of their hands. Fundamentally, it's so much easier for Khan to pick off Malinaji's jab. Unless Khan's coming forward, Malinaji's not able to land his jab. Khan just sits back and picks it off with his gloves. Malinaji, because of the forget about his smaller size for a second, because he keeps his hands low, is much easier for Khan to hit with that straight jab. Malinaji able to connect there. Khan shoots a right hand over the top. Malinaji's game plan coming in was to make Khan reach, to jump out to a lead, as I mentioned, and make Khan get desperate and reach. But that in itself is almost an admission that Khan has to make mistakes for Malinaji to capitalize on. Well, okay, let's say Khan's not making those mistakes. What's plan B? How do you lure him into those traps? And, and Malinaji at this moment doesn't seem to have one. M maybe a function of his lack of punching power. Well, you know, Malinaji, you know, self-described, loves to talk a lot, but you get a sense from a boxing standpoint that Khan has left him speechless to this point. Let his fist do the talking. <laughs> End of round six. Another big round for Amir Khan. Nice work. Yep. Beautiful round. Okay. See that jab? Right. Body head mixing it up, up and down. Very to nothing. 60 to 54. Amir Khan. Bob, I just can't understand why Paulie Malinaji wants to stand in the middle of that rig like in a phone booth and bang with Amir Khan. Amir Khan's just too big, too strong. He gets off first, he lands the cleanest shots. By the way, I've never seen a guy ever wear a pair of Reebok boxing gloves. Amir Khan's the only one I've ever seen wear them. I don't know where he got them from, but be as it may, he's using them. Well, he's got huge sponsorship deals in England. And he's got the Reebok logo on there. You know, Max, in between rounds five and six, Freddie Roach in the corner of Amir Khan said, let's do here. Yeah, he does have a lot of moxies. He is willing to try to change the course of a fight by, by roughing up his opponent. But as you mentioned, he doesn't have the power to see it through. Um, and he's fighting a calculating fighter who knows he enjoys all the advantages in Khan. Malinaji's point that a lot of coddled European fighters fail once they leave Europe and are tested Break, don't punch, don't punch. so far has not step, borne step, out step. tonight. Khan looks like he slept perfectly well last night. He looks very relaxed in the ring right now. He's in control. Scores with a combination that snaps back the head of Malinaji. And, and incidentally, uh, the one example that Malinaji brought up of a European fighter who did leave Europe and went on to great success very good, very good, was uh, very Lennox good. Lewis, who obviously the last undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And Bob, I just wanted to say it's been a pleasure, an honor, to call fights with Lennox over the last four years. He's a great guy. Oh, class act. Class act, great champion. Wonderful gentleman. Good stiff jab from Khan again. No, 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 no. You know, the problem that Malinaji has always had is he doesn't have the eraser in his hand. Mayweather Mosley, Mosley a guy who always won with speed and athleticism. Well, he fought a guy who was more athletic and quicker. Nice job. Beautiful body shot. All right, boy. That's Lean Joe. Yeah. 
hooks coming behind the paint. Please, mine or his? Yours. Okay. Paint and hook. I think you had tape coming off of here. Hooks, the one two ones, all the things that we worked on. Okay? Get up, round eight. Look at Pond that equates to 39%. He's used his reach, his height, his jab. He's controlled the action through the first seven rounds. Yeah, the reason Khan was a big favorite going into this fight is his one weakness so far, hands down, because they can see the action better. They feel that their punches are less visible to their opponent because they're coming from strange angles. But look at how easily, in the middle of the ring, Khan is flying Malanaji's head. And it's happening primarily because Malanaji's hands are down. And Khan is always in position to punch. And position to, to pick punches off. Doesn't look as cool, I know. But it, it works. Doesn't look as cool to keep your hands in a perfect defensive position, but it works. And he's got a great trainer. You made a baseball reference to start the show, Bob. You know, you have a pitching and defense team with a bunch of singles hitters, and they're down 10 nothing late in the game. What do they do? That's Malinaji right now. A bunt isn't going to do it at this point. Right, you need a, you need a three run. Well, he needs a 10 run home run right now, and he ain't a home run hitter. <laughs> Don't punch. Controlling this fight and nicking up the face of Pauli Malinaj. If you shoot something when he's coming in right now, look at me here. Keep your eyes here. Okay? I want to see the right hands and left hook. And you can log on to HBO.com slash boxing to watch those punch zone stack. Well, Malinaji always brimming with confidence. That's had the confidence jab right out of it. Good jab there by Malinaji. And we see with Malinaji, as Harold pointed out in the third after the third round, when Malinaji is up on his toes, he's harder to hit. Um, he really doesn't have much head movement, as you see there. When he's stationary, he has a little upper body movement. He has one pet move where he ducks down to his right, but otherwise has never really avoided. Well, then he's betwixt the between. No matter which style he picks, he's losing. One of the great advantages of Freddie Roach as a trainer. And this goes. And you see Freddie's influence in terms of opponents selected and, and why he would select them. Well, he says they'd like a guy like Maidana next, someone who... Maidana's a punch big harder. puncher, and the thought has been, well, Khan's really just beating Paulie up. Let me ask you at this point, I know Paulie is as game as they come. He fought with the orbital, fractured orbital bone against Cotto, but he has no power in his hands. He never has. I mean, at some point, if you're the corner, you look out for the guy and just say, you know, this is enough of a beating. I, I really win. think he's taken more clean shots in this fight than he did again. The head shots are really precise. And there are a lot of them from Khan. And I guess there could be hanging the hat on the fact that, you know, Khan was knocked out once if we could get him on the chin. But Malinaji doesn't have that kind of power. You got, you're going into 10 now. You know what? 10, 11, 12. You, you know what? Go. That's a better round. You know why? Because he's taking chances. He's stepping in on that sucker right now. Okay? You can't sit there and wait on him. You hear me, baby? Go in and eat him up. Step in your punches. You feel me? Don't yes me to that, Paulie. Okay? I saw a, a little improvement. In Side scorer, Harold Dunham. What can you say, Bob? Nine to nothing. 90 to 81 in the Khan. He's still standing in the middle of the ring. Get no first, they had a perfect, beautiful, hard, effective shots. And, you know, just win in this final clean, effective punching. Yeah, you know, Paulie's trying, but he's taking a beating. <laughs> Nine to nothing, Amir Khan. By most of his opponents throughout his career, he, ba he backed straight up in the line instead of stepping around at times. And Khan's exploiting some technical deficiencies of Malinaji. 
Right hand over the top from Premier Cobb. Beyond just the positioning of Malinaji's hands. Yeah, I mean, heading into the night, the question was, was there a miscalculation in terms of matchmaking with the two young stars, Khan and Ortiz, against the two veterans who come up the hard way and had to pay dues? Um, and the answer is no. They were matched perfectly. But they both deserve credit for looking, for, for, for winning every round. Literally. Yes. Yeah. Ortiz and Khan together have won every single round tonight. No talking. It's that easy for Amir Khan. Khan has talked about taking Maidana next. He resents the idea that he's ducking Maidana. Um, but, you know, if you're building your fighter back from a knockout loss, Maidana's a tremendous puncher. He is technically totally outclassed by Khan, at least on paper. But before you take that kind of risk against a fighter who punches like Maidana, you want to get your fighter's confidence back. And against Katelnik and Malinaji, two very good boxers, Khan's confidence looks sky high. And of round 10. That's good. Deep breath, son. Look no. at me, look at me. You feeling good? Yeah. Deep breath. Look at me right here. Okay? Step in, stop going backwards. Open the doctors, you know. Stop going thinking, backwards. Yeah, you feel so me? I don't okay, have sniff the to shit and go in inside. Put some water on his head. Six minutes. Okay? Six minutes. Deep breath. Six minutes. Deep breath, son. Deep breath. Wake up. Listen. Step in. The right hand you're not throwing. Come on, baby. Come on. What are we gonna do? Hold on. Steve Smoger, you know, Steve Smoger came in and told Malinaji, you gotta do something. Malinaji. He's good. What? He's good. He's done? He's good, he's good. Let's go, one more. One more. You're good. Go. One I'm gonna more. give him one more one round. More. You know, Steve Smoger is doing a good job of one more. I love what the commission's doing here, what the doctor's doing. Well, after the war of words that these two had in the run-up to the fight, the pushing and shoving during the weigh-in, real respect. Really, he called timeout before the start of the last two rounds. He told Malinaji, I'm going to give you one more round. And it wasn't even from that sequence. It was some of the other punches before that. Malinaji just did not have anything to deal with Khan. There's a good step in left hand by Amir Khan. And it was just too easy for him. He landed 41% of his jabs, 38% of his power shots, dominating this fight. For the official time of the stoppage to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Steve Smoger steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The official time, 1 minute, 25 seconds of round number 11. The winner by TKO victory and still... WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World from Bolton, Lancashire, England, Amir King Khan. Amir Khan retains his 140-pound belt as referee Steve Smoger steps in and stops the bout at 125 of round number 11. Khan now 23 and 1. 17 stoppages. While we take a look at the numbers from CompuBox and the total punches in the fight, Khan landed at 40%, landing 259 punches, more than double the amount landed by Malinaji, who landed 24% in the fight. Khan was busier, more accurate. You know, controlling the fight with the jab was something Freddie Roach talked about, his trainer. He talked about it between rounds, and Khan did it. 41% as he lands nearly 100 more jabs than Malinaji in the fight. He beat him at his own game. And those jabs to the head of Malinaji, you take a look at the numbers, and they are staggering. 200 points. What happened to Malinaji? How were you able to do that? Uh, you know, um, I've got speed, uh, power, and um, I'm using my speed and my boxing skills, and also the jab. You know, I got a great jab. Me and Freddie have been working on that jab for such a long time, 
and you know it worked for me everything was coming after the job your defense also was quite good he would he found it difficult to land much against you although there are some signs of some shots that he did land against you what was the defensive strategy you know, boxing is a sport, you know, you're going to go in a shower, you're going to get wet, you know, you're going to go in a boxing ring, you're going to get hit. You know, Paul is a very awkward fighter, he would catch me with shots when I was coming in, I had to do a lot of feints, so I had to break him down. I could... Good 140 pound division. A fighter that's been talked about with you is Marcos Maidana, tremendous puncher. What do you think about fighting Maidana? You know, he's a great fighter, but, you know, we know how to beat Maidana. I know I can beat Maidana, and, you know, if he wants to fight me, you know, tell him to get in the line. I'd love to fight him next. And, you know, that's, that, um, I've, I've put a statement today, and if, Paul, if, if uh, Maidana wants to fight me, let's have it next. Because of your size and your star potential, and you're already your very bright star in England, the question as to how long you will remain at 140 pounds comes up from time to time. Will you stay in the division long enough to fight either Tim Bradley or Devin Alexander or whoever em emerges from that group? You know, definitely. You know, everyone's talking about me can't fight in these big names. And by the way, you know, I am making 140 pounds easy. My strength conditioner, Alex Ruiz, is doing a great job with me. I feel strong. I'm a big um, 140 fighter. You know, a lot of people put the pressure on me. Why don't you fight Maidana? You know, I'd fight Maidana next. Let Timothy Bradley fight Alexander. The winner of them, us guys, will face in the final, you know. So it's like having a semi-final. Me, Maidana, Alexandra versus Timothy Bradley. You know, let's do it. So you're not leaving 140 until business is settled? I ain't going to leave 140 pounds until I unify the title, you know, till I'm number one. I'm not going to leave this division. Yeah. That's what we wanted to hear. Thanks so much, Amir. Tremendous performance. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Paulie, we've seen you beaten by pressure fighters. You know, when I turned pro, I had a similar style to Amir, you know, and as I got older, I hurt my hands, I started slowing it down and trying to pick my shots more. And I ran into like a, a clone of myself from when I was younger, but maybe even stronger and bigger and faster, you know? And, uh, you know, he was very busy, you know, I couldn't keep up with him, I guess. Uh, I, I couldn't get the distance right. Early in the fight, after the third round, Harold Letterman pointed out that you always give the 100% effort. Congratulations on a tremendous effort, and uh, there's certainly no quit in you. We're glad it stopped when it was. <laughs> thanks, Paulie. Hey, man, uh, thanks to HBO for having me on, man. I, uh, I gave it a shot, you know? Uh, like I said, you guys got a great fight. I think you guys got a great junior welterweight tournament coming up. Uh, I look forward to watching it myself. <laughs> thanks, Paulie. Alexander fight each other with the winner to fight the winner. I'll take it. Good enough. Let's settle business at 140 pounds. Bob?